Thank you for tuning in to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages delivered from the throne of grace to draw you near to God, to receive mercy for your failures, and find grace to help in your times of need. God has perfect timing in all that he sets his hand to do, and he makes things happen for you because he loves you. Tonight, we're talking about the peace and joy of living from a heavenly viewpoint each day. Today, as we look at living from heaven to earth, we want to understand how God sees us and how God views things and to quit viewing things from our viewpoint. When you get God's viewpoint, you'll never be the same. God has already won the victory that you need in every affair of life. He tells you in Matthew 6, 8, that even before you come to him, he knows those things that you have need of. And if he already knows those things he need, you have need of, then he as a good father is going to provide those needs for you. So you just worship and praise him and thank him for all the good that he's doing in your life. Christ came to help you be all that God planned for you to be from the beginning. You have been raised with Christ to a new life. You're sharing his resurrection from the dead. So seek the rich eternal treasures that are above in heaven where Christ is seated at God's own right hand. When you look from God's viewpoint, you'll see that you have been seated with Christ and you look down on the world as God looks down on the world. You see his compassion and his mercy poured out by his grace, demonstrated in the lives of men and women and children to make a difference that's eternally different for their lives and those of their families and their friends and all they come in contact with. God is doing something great for you. He's doing something new for you this beginning of this year. And just set your mind and keep it set on those things which are above those heavenly things, and you'll see what God's doing on the earthly side of things. God wants you to know that you are special in his sight. He wants you to know that you are more than a conqueror. And so he lets you know that he directs your path. The Lord directs you where to look for his help and where it's going to come from. He gives you a good instruction. He says that you're to lift up your eyes to God. Look up, and not to man. For in and with the Lord your God rest your salvation and your safety and your provision and your protection. Your help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So look to him. Look up to him. Look to him in heaven and watch what changes he makes on the earth for you. He will not allow you to stumble, nor your foot to slip. Listen, he who keeps you never slumbers. He's always watching over you. He's always taking care of you. He loves you. He says to you that there is no rock like me, your God. I guard you and I make a hedge of protection around you in your house, and around your children, around all that you set your hand to do. Yes, I bless the works of your hand, and your possessions increase in the land in the name of Jesus. You have been endowed with power from on high, from heaven itself, and you stand in the power of God's mighty working power, which raised Christ from the dead, power that no weapon can stand against or prosper, and It's a power that fills you with strength when you're weak. It gives you hope when you're discouraged. It causes you to rise up even when you want to lie down. You'll find that as the child of the living God, that you are more than a conqueror. And because you are his child, he does abundantly above what you can even ask, think, hope, or imagine. In Deuteronomy 28, he says that, He gives you overtaking blessings. That means he's surprising you along the way with blessings you didn't intend to receive. Blessings that he had in his mind and in his plan for you.
to give you a thought about tomorrow, to look from heaven's viewpoint to earth. God loves you. You're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do those good works which he planned beforehand that you should do, living the good life that you should live. And if he planned that, that means he also provided for it. And if he provided for it, it means he also has a plan for your life. And if he has a plan for your life, it means he also has things he wants you to see on a day-by-day basis to be encouraged that God himself, the God of the universe, God Almighty, has a personal relationship with you because he loves you and wants your absolute best because you're his child. You walk very securely and confidently when you trust in and depend on God because he will not be moved. There's nothing that can cause him to slip. There's nothing that can cause him to stumble. God is greater than anything you can imagine and does greater for you than anything you can even ask or think. God's blessings and favor from heaven, they cause you to live day by day not afraid of the world, but knowing that you're a victor in the world. God causes you to lie down. He's the one that makes you slow down and gives you good rest. You don't have to be afraid about tomorrow. You don't have to get in a sudden panic when the storms of life are blasting around you. God is for you. God is with you. God is on your side. Think about that. God is for you. God is with you. God is on your side. God himself, who created the universe and everything in it, visible and invisible, he is on your side. He is with you. And then he says in Romans 8, 31, who can be your foe? Who should you ever be afraid of if God is on your side? You see, that's a heavenly perspective. That's a heavenly viewpoint looking down the earth. That's because you're a child of the living God. You've been given the authority of the name of Jesus. You've been endowed and empowered with the very Holy Spirit of God. And you have power from on high to do greater than you can imagine. For even Christ himself lives in you. And greater is he who lives in you than he who is in the world whom he conquered. You see, God blesses you. The Lord is with you. He keeps you in all your ways. One of the ways that you can keep your attention to God is to focus on God and the things above and not on the things on the earth. The things of the earth are always changing. But when you focus on God and look to him, he will show you what the earth looks like. He will give you an earthly viewpoint so that you can see how what you do in the spirit realm, what you do before God in praising and offering up thanksgiving to him, that it moves people that come across your path and whom you pray and whom you uplift before the presence of God to be changed and never be the same again. God loves you. God watches over you. He says that when you have a heaven viewpoint and once you have been born again, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's a heaven viewpoint. Now, how do you think that actually works out on earth? If you've been born again of the Spirit of God and you're a new creation, a new creature altogether, that means that God indwells you. It means that you have all the favor that God has available. It means you have all the attributes God has available. It means you have all the gifts that God has available. It means you have all the fruits that God has available. And that he will sit there and do greater for you because he loves you than you can imagine. The Spirit of God is operating on you and in you, stirring your mind's most holy emotions. And it's he that gives you the very mind of Christ, Christ himself living in you, so that you hold his thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. You see, God himself is the one who gives you the ideas and the thoughts and the things that you should do. It's because you're in his presence. And when you're in his presence, he causes you to think on those things that are above and not the things that are beneath. 
beneath because you are in heaven, seated with him in the heavenly places. When you accept that God is in complete control and that you accept his perfect will, then even the things which seem good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you will come to pass. God, your Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ has given you his grace and his peace from heaven above. He has opened the windows of heaven and poured out blessing on you. There's not room enough to receive it. So if you're not receiving it, open your arms wildly and say, I receive, Father. I receive, Father. I receive, Father, in the name of Jesus. And God will hear that prayer because God says, that when you stand and look up to heaven from where your help comes, you're doing the opposite of what most people do by keeping their minds on the things of the earth, the things that they desire, the things that they want, the itchy things that they want to receive because other people have them. And when you keep your mind on the things of the earth, where they're going, they're next to it will be destruction but when you set your heart on the things of heaven it will change your life jesus gave us a key in the lord's prayer at where our direction should be focused at he says and this is his blessing that proceeds from heaven to earth therefore my father which art in heaven Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Did you hear that? God wants his works done just as they are in heaven on earth. And he has given you that position to do those things that please him this very day. Heaven is not just above you but it's also ahead of you heaven in a sense is now what is yet to come the future so to live from heaven to earth is to live in god's future but god's future is also his plan for today for you god says to come boldly to his throne of grace to receive mercy for your failures and his well-timed help for your time of needs. I've seen that personally even today. I had many obstacles that were confronting me from not being able to make a plane trip to having people miss meetings and then having people interrupt in meetings and then have my computer not work. And it gave me great opportunities to sit there and fuss and complain. But I did just the opposite. I said, thank you, Lord. I even told the people at the ticket counter, you must have a, God has a reason for this. I'm, I'm looking forward to see what it is. And I believe that God had a reason for all the things that he's doing in my life. And he's doing it the same for you. So the key is to live each day from the future and not keep living in your past. Look at the things that are hopeful. Look at the things that you can say the Lord is doing for you. Don't look at the things you can see because they can change. Look at the things above, not below. Live from the future and not the past. So, how's one of the easiest ways to live from the future? You simply do it when you realize that God already knows everything that you need before you ask him. Then you know every problem, every prayer, and everything you bring before him already, he has answered. So the secret is not to live from the problem, but to live knowing that God has already solved the problem and that his answer is already coming to you before you see the answer. Just thank you, Father God, that you do come to us and that you do bring us the answer and that you do show us the things that we need and that you cause our minds to be focused on those things that you cause us to be focused on. I thank you that every day 
We choose to live not from our present crisis, Father God, but from your answers already coming to us. Now, from your present obstacle, look to the future breakthrough that God is doing for you. Don't look at the obstacle. Look at the answer. Don't look at the problem. Look at the answer. If you're in a battle, and a battle that's already won, you're no longer a victim, but a victor. Because it's no longer you who lives, but Christ lives in you. You are the victor. For greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. 1 John 4.4 4. When you live each day from the victory that Jesus has already won for you, you recognize that God disarmed the principalities and powers that were raged against you and made a public bold spectacle of them, triumphing over them in love and in the cross. For you being born of God are victorious over the world. And you call, he causes you who loves him to want to do those things that he wants you to do. As it's written, when you ask in prayer, you believe that you receive it because God has already sent it to you. So you can thank him and sing praise to him knowing that if you're asking him, it's him that's drawing you to himself to be able to ask. It's him that already knows the answer to the thing that you're asking. And by him sending the answer before you actually even speak to him, then you know that God's mercy and understanding are with you. Right where you're at. Right there. Right there now. And he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. You live from heaven from where all blessings come. That's where you live from. You don't live from earth trying to make the earth make a blessing. But you live in heavenly blessings. You live in the finished work of Christ. And you are freed from the sins and sicknesses and diseases that the enemy has hampered you with. I just thank you, Father God, for it in the name of Jesus. You know, Father God, what every person needs. So it's my pos prayer, Father God, that they live from their present position in Christ, from the spirit of the living God, directing and keeping and helping and effectively at work in them each day. I thank you, Father God, that they see in their life you and that you see them, Father God, in a way that makes you happy with them. And it's my prayer, Father God, that you would manifest your personal relationship with each and every one that hears this message. And for those that will hear the message from your extended hearers, Father God, but in all things, that they would give you thanks so that their future and their hope would be filled with joy because the joy of the Lord is their strength. And I know, Father God, that the Lord gives them what he would have them to have. And all things are his, so all things are available to you. Just ask. God's finished work is the one thing that's guaranteed of all things to be a victory in Christ Jesus. And because he won the victory, you know that God's going to accomplish his viewpoint from heaven and from earth. And we just thank you for it, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, there are many days where we don't know what to do, but we know that you know what to do. So we can just come to you boldly and just seek your face, knowing that you would help us in all our times of need. There's a loved one right there, Father God. You're beloved. They're watching TV and listening to this broadcast at the same time, and they're wondering if God's real. Will you be real to me? Father, I pray that you would manifest your presence in every believer, Father God, that they may know the one true God in the power of your might, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, trust God. Look from heaven down to earth as God looks. And then you will see things differently because God's the one that gives you the power to see things as he sees things. And once you do, you'll never be the change. 
same again because God in you stirs your most holy emotions to want to do things better for people than they want to do for themselves many, many times. So trust God. Let him guide you, direct you, and help you. And know that he is faithful to you always in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Until next time, remember, God loves you, I love you, and Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.